from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening. Investigations are now underway into how a Glenorchy man died 40 minutes after being taken into custody by police. The 29-year-old was arrested after reports were received of his suspicious and erratic behaviour. Josh Duggan has the details. A 29-year-old man from Glenorchy has died this morning while in police custody at the Hobart Reception Prison. His senior next of kin were notified this morning by uh, our investigators. Uh, it's very tragic and it's very sad. Police say the man was taken into custody around 1.50 this morning on Main Road, Moona. After several reports were received that he was acting in a suspicious and erratic manner in the Moona area. He was transported to the Hobart Reception Prison but found unresponsive around 2.30. Our staff have provided uh, medical assistance um, that in the form of CPR, Ambulance Tasmania have been notified and attended and taken over from the police as I understand it and unfortunately the man's died. Police are unable to give details about the man's condition when arrested or of events leading to his death. And the circumstances surrounding the uh, man's arrest will be subject to the coronial investigation. A professional standards investigation is also underway while the Integrity Commission has been notified. Tasmania's number one tourist hotspot is looking for its newest recruit with a stallholder space opening up at the Salamanca Markets. Dubbed the ideal location for a new business to take off with thousands packing in every Saturday. It's a must-see on any Tassie tourists' visit list and it could be in for a shake-up. Things that we don't already have, so services like a nail technician or a massage or a barber, it's something that we don't have currently and, and would be fantastic to see something like that at Salamanca. The Stallholders Association's on the hunt for its newest addition with a casual spot opening up, something which only happens every two years. There is a bit of rotation through so it's just an opportunity to bring in some new stalls, bring in some fresh products um, and you know liven up the market a bit. With 350 stalls it's the largest market in the southern hemisphere from Tassie's iconic scallop pies to crafts and local wines. It's good to, to always be out there and be providing our quality product and, and really that, that core essence of what Simple was about. Around 25,000 people drop by the markets every week and while that number will begin to drop when the temperature does, it's still vital exposure for these small businesses. I have gained wholesale orders all around the world. Um, you know, you can find my products sometimes in Germany, in you know, all around the mainland. Traders can throw their hat in the ring online, but they need to be quick. Application close next week. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's next crop of elite athletes have had a rev up from a sporting superstar. Jack Jumper's captain Clint Steindl teaching the state little athletics team a thing or two about performance before they head off to nationals in a fortnight. Sportsmanship supporting their fellow athletes. It doesn't matter whether you're running first or last. This is a team event. 49 Tassie kids will compete in Adelaide across under 13, 14 and 15 age groups. A busy stretch of Hobart Road will become wider from Monday when parking is banned along a section of Macquarie Street. A clearway will extend on the left-hand side between Gore and Mole Street, while a no-stopping zone will operate on the right. It's hoped the changes will result in safer and more reliable access to the CBD. Even though we're headed towards winter, Tasmanian gardens are still full of this season's delights. Launceston Horticultural Society has thrown open the doors on its smallest show of the year, but that doesn't stop it packing in some of its largest produce. It might not be big enough for Cinderella's coach, but this whopping 274 kilogram pumpkin is enough to catch the judge's eyes. The autumn show is sort of my main focus and I, I like growing big vegetables. Warren Pruer is no stranger to prize produce, but this beast is the peak of his mega crop. My previous biggest pumpkin was 78 kilos, so this is a big step up from that. So logistics have got a bit more complicated. This year's gigantic winner, just one of the mammoth vegetables lifted onto the display table. When it comes to autumn flowers, local growers are still putting up the best of the bunch. 
an amazing um, representation of autumn this year. It's, considering the weather we've had, it's just an amazing display. A full bloom display, despite Green Thumbs battling a historically dry summer spell. I was exceptionally worried probably a week ago, thinking, oh, will it really have much to put in? Will we better fill the hall? But no, they've done an amazing job. Keen flower fans wasting no time on day one, celebrating the vibrant best of the season as this year's champions plant the seeds for future winners. 300 kilos is the next year's target. A weighty goal indeed. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. The West Moona Neighbourhood House opened its doors today. Families getting involved in everything from blowing bubbles to sampling snags to tricks. A chance for the organisation to raise awareness about the work it does serving the Moona area. Domestic violence, food insecurity is a huge one at the moment. Um, the cost of living, we're helping a lot of people with food assistance and things like that. A grant by Healthy Tasmania made the fun day possible, gifted for Neighbours Day. North Launceston's completed their perfect start to the TSL season, beating North Hobart by 87 points. It wasn't the only big win of the day as Lauderdale and Clarence recorded huge scores. Unbeaten this season, North Launceston are the competition's form side. Harvey Griffiths had the ball on a string. Jim Griffiths, the opportunist, picks up and goals. Harvey Griffiths, that's his bread and butter. As the Bombers piled on five first quarter goals. The margin opening up in the second as North Hobart wasted their opportunities. Fletcher Bennett floated forward to slot a floater. The defender Fletcher Bennett has kicked one. The game soon out of reach, with the Bombers winning by 87 points. The Pies were on a high after their first TSL win in three years. Lauderdale brought them back down to earth with a thud. That's a nice looking kick. How do you like that from Phil Bellchambers? Threads the eye of the needle. Seven goals to zip in a thunderous first quarter. The Pies getting on the board early in the second. Looks pretty good off the boat and draws the roar of the crowd. But the Bomber belting didn't stop. Up by 83 at the half, the Bombers rolled home in first gear to collect their first win of the season. With a win under their belts already, the Roos got the early bounce against Launceston. But with a quick snap and a tight first term, the Blues kept pace. The second term was a different story though, the Roos powering away. Wiley, thumping kick inside forward, 50 on the vicinity, a goal, Wiley! Launceston goalless for the term as Clarence put the game beyond doubt. Cruising through the second half as Josh Green hauled in seven goals. You bet he has the distance, Josh Green! Launceston left winless, sitting last on the TSL ladder. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Our NBL1 women's sides will be looking to rebound on court tonight after both went down in the first clash of their round two double headers last night. The Chargers women falling short to the Dandenong Rangers, 60 to 79. And despite a top scoring effort from Sarah O'Neill. O'Neill, Sarah O'Neill for three, makes it. Big bucket for the Torns. The Launceston Tornado's sluggish start to their campaign continues, with the Waverley Falcons stealing a 32 point victory. In the men's, the Northwest Thunder fight for redemption after a 20 point loss to the Falcons. While our state's only Friday night success story, the Hobart Chargers will be hoping to back it up following their 12-point win over the Rangers. Stuart McSwain has fallen short of a podium finish in the 1500 metre final at the Australian Track and Field Championships in Adelaide. Despite leading for most of the race, the King Island runner dropped out of the tight dash to the finish line on the home straight. And looks for a spot to run through and Myers is not done with yet. Have a look at this as they come into the straight. Hunt's in the middle as well. There's six or seven across the track. Adam Spencer's in front. Hobart's Jacob Despard fighting off a strong field, including fellow Tasmanian Jack Hale, to claim third in the 100 metre final. Two more Jack Jumper greats have put pen to paper. Jack McVeigh signing on for two more years at the club. The club MVP says it wasn't even a decision and the island feels like home now. Anthony Drimmick also inking a one-year contract extension. He's expected to return to Tasmania in August after playing for the Adelaide Bearcats in the NBL1 season. And that's all in sport for Saturday night. Jackie Harvey will join us after the break with the weather forecast.
Good evening. 23 was the state's top in Hobart today. Launceston 22, 20 across Devonport and Burnie. 22 in Grove, Strawn 17 and 19 in Flinders Island. Across the state today shows scattered cloud increasing about the west. Further out, a mid-level cloud band sits over the north of New South Wales while troughs drive cloud about eastern Queensland. Tomorrow, a cold front approaches the west of Tasmania with possible light afternoon showers across the central and northeastern areas. West to north, westerly winds tomorrow, 15 to 25 knots, swells up to 3.5 metres in the west and south and below one metre in the north. A strong wind warning is current as well for the southeast coast and southwest coast. Tomorrow's forecast now Hobart and Ooze 21, partly cloudy in Richmond. In the north, Launceston and Devonport, partly cloudy, 19 in Deloraine. Burnie tomorrow, 19, showers across Strawn and Curry. St Helens and Swansea, partly cloudy and a shower or two in Whitemark. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Monday showers about the west and far south. Tuesday showers in the west and developing about the east coast during the morning. And Wednesday fine apart from showers about the west and northeast. Capital cities 27 and sunny in Perth tomorrow. Adelaide partly cloudy and 26 and mostly sunny in Sydney. And currently Hobart 15, partly cloudy, Launceston 16 and Devonport 16 and partly cloudy. That's all in weather tonight, Lou. Lovely. Thanks, Jackie. And that's all your news for tonight. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be back at the desk. See you tomorrow. Good night.